And I want to share with you, uh, um, and I, I want to share with you a message of forgiveness. Let's turn to uh, the book of Hebrews. And the first part of the message today is I, we have to understand that God provided forgiveness for everyone. Amen? And he did it through Jesus. He didn't do it through everything else. As a matter of fact, he didn't even do it through the law. And that's what's so important about the book of Hebrews. He didn't do it through the law. He did it through Jesus and Jesus only. So I was going to read the whole chapter, but I just want to get over to, uh, let's see. Um, let's look at verse 19. What chapter? Hebrews chapter 10. Sacrifices and offerings you did not desire. He's talking about Father God. He didn't really desire them. He was disciplining the two of Israel so they could understand what they needed to forget of sin. But a body you prepared for me. Jesus was saying, my body you prepared to be the sacrifice once and for all for the whole world. Can you say, praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. You don't earn Salvation by sacrificing an animal or sprinkling blood on an altar, you receive salvation only one way. And then simply believe that Jesus did it once and for all for everybody. Right? Let's look at it. It says, uh, You prepared a body for me with blood offering and sin offering, for you were not pleased. Then I then I said, here I am. It was written about me in the scrolls. I have come to do your will, O God. Look at verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with to, uh, sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unwaveringly to the hope we have professed, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love, and good deeds. Now let me verse, for us to verse 25 also. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Father, we love you this morning. We thank you, Father God, for the love that you just lavished on us through your son, Jesus. We didn't deserve anything, but you provided a way that we may come into your throne room and worship and glorify you. Father God, I thank you for that this morning. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins that cleanses our mind and our hearts and our soul. Thank you, Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to share with you the first thing this morning. Point number one, if you will, forgiveness was provided by our Father through Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. If you would turn with me, I'm going to go through a few scripture verses this morning, and I want you to follow along. I believe faith this morning is going to raise up in this place. I believe grace is going to be bestowed upon those that need it. I believe forgiveness is going to flow through you, so you can flow, that forgiveness can flow to others. Amen? Yes. But we need to take a look, if you don't mind, it's kind of what I, I like to do. Go back to Genesis and remember why we need forgiveness. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 3 says, uh, tells us the story about the fall of man. Everybody probably here knows that. 
Adam and Eve it was given some instruction, they disobeyed God, and they were separated from God. Sin entered the world. Disobedience entered the world. At that point, uh, Adam and Eve could no longer stay in the garden, because if they stayed in the garden, they, they tasted of tree of life, they would never die. And forgiveness of sin couldn't happen. So God had to put an angel, set it before them, cast them out of heaven. But before he did, he did something amazing. Because God loved Adam and Eve. And God loved you. When I read this part of scripture, people sometimes just read over Genesis, and oh yeah, that's, what, that's the fall of man. But I want you to read with me, if you will, Genesis 3, verse 21. It says, The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And, he, and the Lord said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out to his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat. That comes later. And live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden cherubims and flaming swords flashing back and forth to guard the way of the tree of life. But what's so beautiful about this moment? Even though back then, man, Adam and Eve said, God did something that was amazing. He sacrificed an animal. I think it was a lamb. It doesn't say my Bible. But I just think it was. He sacrificed that lamb. He skinned it. He made some clothes for them. And then he sent them out. They had to be separated from his presence. Until the true Lamb of God could come and take away the sins of the world. Amen? So let's look at that. Look at in John chapter 3. Most of us know this one. We see it at football games, even. <laughs> my favorite verse when I was, uh, I'd like to go to it because my favorite verse when I became a new Christian and tell people, they always think, there are people that think God's mad at everybody. God's mad. I don't. I have no relationship. I don't understand God. God. But this this verse, chapter three. I used to, we used to teach it to the kids on the street. We did street ministry. We used to teach it to everybody. And I always used to teach John three sixteen, but then John three seventeen. Does anybody know John three seventeen? Can you quote that? Besides Pastor Andrew, John three seventeen. I know my kids should know this because I say it all. John 3.16 says, For God, right? I'll, I'll read it. God, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall, may have eternal life. Verse 17 is so important because we miss, we think that it, it kind of adds to the, it takes the sting away from who we are, right? It, it, it welcomes us to, in, 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 into God's presence. For God's, um, uh, for God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, world through him might be saved. How great is the love of our Father? He says that he loves us so much he sent Jesus to forgive our sins, to take our sins away. And, he, and then he said, I didn't come, his purpose wasn't to condemn everybody. But then every, so when we pray for the loss of Madison, we pray for everybody to be forgiven, even the bad people, right? Even the people that wronged us, even the, everybody, God provided salvation. I know it's very simple, but I want you to understand that He provided this for everybody. He provided for you and me. You probably learned this in kindergarten, Sunday school, right? And He provided for the world. You know, the message never changes. The message never changes. God loves you. And God, our Father, cares about you enough to send His Son, who is willing to sacrifice life that you may be forgiven. Amen? God provided for you forgiveness through the Son of Jesus Christ. What do we do to be forgiven? What do we do to be forgiven? Do we earn it? Do we have to do works for it? What do we have to do? I see many Christians doing this. Like, I have to be doing something. I didn't believe we should be doing something. But we do it for the wrong motive. We should just do it because we want to demonstrate the love of God the Father. Because God forgiven me, I want to extend that forgiveness to other people. But what do we do? It says we must, in John 3.16 here, it says we must believe. 
Romans says the same thing. First chapter, second. I'm everywhere you read in the Word of God, it says that if you believe, what? That Jesus died for your sins. That's all. You can read this from Genesis to Revelation, and you'll find one thing. Those that were faithful to God believed that he existed. And they followed whatever creed or whatever they needed to do to honor him in, his life, in their lives. They loved him. They served him. First John 1 John 1.9 says this, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So we have to believe, and we have to what? Say something, right? Yes. God, forgive me. What happens? It's like you're, it's in your mind. It rattles around in there. But once I say, Lord, forgive me for not trusting you, or Holy Spirit, let me rely on you and not on myself. Once we confess it, what happens in us when we say these words? Faith begins to rise up in us. And we begin to understand by the power of the Holy Spirit we're forgiven. So yes, I think there's something we have to do. We have to confess. He says in 1 John, it tells us, John, man, John just loved God. Jesus, right? He's a disciple that loved the Lord. So when you read John, you read all about God's love over and over and over again. If we confess, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. And what's so cool about that? Once we confess it, he purifies us. He makes us whole. He restores us into a relationship with our God, our Father. Amazing. Now I can enter in God's presence, go to that curtain that separated us and that wasn't the temple, and walk right into boldly into God's throne room and say, hey God, here I am. Do you get the picture? Do you, when you pray, I like when we pray, on, on, um, when we have our monthly prayer meetings, or when we, we pray, I sometimes when I get, uh, do you, does anybody ever get distracted while you're praying? Just a little bit. And so sometimes I enter, I picture myself entering into the holies of holies in the temple. You know what I'm saying? Where that curtain was ripped from top to bottom. And now I can go to my father and my dad, Father God, and just talk with him. I love doing that. And then it kind of focuses me on, Lord, I come to you because of the blood of Jesus. I, I know he provided for access for me to now talk to you. I know I've been totally forgiven of all my sins and unrighteousness. Lord, purify me. And I asked him to do that before I even get that. <laughs> anyway, Acts 10, 43 says, All prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness. All you have to do is believe. I want you to know, Acts uh, 13, 18, 30, eight, Acts 13, 38 says, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sin is proclaimed to everyone. Romans 4, 7 says, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. How is your sins covered? They're covered by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Blessed are those, that's you guys, you're blessed. Let's, let's see some blessed smiles on your face for a second. So, oh, Pastor Bob, you, I've already heard this stuff before. How many have already heard this? I'm not preaching anything new this morning until in maybe a little bit. All right? We're all forgiven by Jesus. We have to get that in our spirit. We're all forgiven if we believe that he did what he did on the cross for us. We all have to believe that Jesus <coughs> died and rose again. We have to believe that. Else, we, what are we doing here? What do, why do we come to church? Why are we here? Well, I love Pastor Andrew, and I want to come visit with him. I love Sunday morning. I love worship. But, you know, yeah, that's all good. But the reason I'm here is because I'm forgiven. We're all forgiven today. We come together for the common thing. And that's not because we're Wisconsin Badgers. It's because we're forgiven. Amen? There's no, we have nothing else in common, right? When we get to know each other, we go, what's the difference? I remember, remember anybody remember Leo? Leo was a, a, a Chinese a lawyer. He got his degree here at Madison. And he's um, in, uh, what do you call it, uh, merchant. What is it? What is his degree in, uh, Richard? Leo. He's, um, yeah, he's a, he's a legal, legal something, whatever. Okay, uh, international studies, that's what it was. So anyway, Leo called me yesterday. He said I call, He said I had a phone call. My, call, my phone call, called him. It didn't. 
I mean, I looked out everywhere. I did not call him. I didn't text him. I didn't, like, whatever, you know. Anyway, I had a good time talking with Leo, reminding him of what happened when he accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior yesterday. He got married, so I got to talk to him about marriage stuff, you know. Like, Dad, you know, Leo, he's, yeah, me and my wife are arguing about it. Like, well, how long have you been married? Well, two months. I said, oh, that's about normal, you know. It was fun. It was just, but I remind him of what happened the day he accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. It was really awesome. I said, you're blessed, brother. God's blessing you. He's traveling all over the place for his job in Canada. He was flying from Canada to back to uh, the West Coast, and he was in Detroit. So I don't know how this phone called me, but I, talk, I always think that's not an accident that it happens. I mean, the Holy Spirit can work through some iPhones, right? Or Androids, I think. I'm not sure about that, but um, usually iPhones are probably a little bit better. But anyway, it says, so we're blessed. We're forgiven. How many feel blessed this morning that you forgiven? Yes. Huh? How about a little amen or hallelujah? Let's get it on, right? Jesus loves you, and I'm blessed, and I'm forgiven. I'm, I'm set free from all my bondages. Even the stuff that the enemy tries to throw back at me over the years, I'm free. Hallelujah. Amen. We should like have a shout party, run around the church a few times, and woo, God, I'm free. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Thank you, Lord. I can't believe he forgave me. That's how my first couple of years, in, like when I became a my first couple of years, I, I would just cry every time I prayed. Like, I can't believe you forgave me, God. I'm a new person. Everything, I, every time I prayed, every time I read the word, I couldn't believe that God forgave me because I was pretty messed up. And God set me free. It was an awesome moment. Amen. Do you remember that? Sometimes we need, need to go back to the day when you were born again, when you, when you said yes to Jesus. Yes, I believe He is the Son of God. Yes, I believe. I've been washed by the blood of Jesus. Yes, I'm free from the guilt of my sin because of Jesus. All the stuff that happened to me, all the stuff that I did, terrible things, all wiped clean in a moment And when I believed that Jesus was the Son of God. I remember that day. I remember because I grew up in a Catholic church, so I grew up with all the, I was an altar boy too, so I was really good. And, um, you know, we did the Mass, and we did all the things, you know, we had to do to prepare for the Mass, and we had our, we lived in a little town, Wind Lake, Wisconsin, and our, our uh, church was in the back of a bar, the dance hall of the bar. And so we got to my family, my grandma, and us kids, we'd go early so we could help clean up all the beer bottles. We didn't have cans back then like they do now, but it was all beer bottles. Then, you know, the, the beer smell, you know, we had a, you know, they were sweet, yeah, anyway. So we set up all the chairs and we had mass and it was just a ritual. We did all these things, right? So I mean, I thought I was good. I did. I did what I had to do, right? I mean, some of us come from backgrounds like that, different religions. Where it's all what we have to do, and it was like we're, there was really no. And then he showed us that movie. Did you ever see that movie, Catholics? Right? Where Jesus died on the cross, where they showed the crucifixion. Man, I was scared for weeks. <laughs> I mean. But then I did, when I, when I was about 19 years old, I understood what he did for me. Mm -hmm. What that all meant back then. I mean, you know, praise the Lord. I had a good foundation on, on fearing God <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, fearing the priests and everybody else. But anyway, you know, but I saw, I remember that movie that night. They showed that night and the lights were all low in the, in the dance hall there. And it was like this big, it was a projector screen, you know, with the, with the little movie screen and I saw Jesus being beat and spit upon and his beard ripped out and, and uh, the, the crown of thorns pushed on his head and they showed it with a board where the, the, the Roman soldiers pushed it on his head and blood spewed over his face and I was, I was just oh my goodness is that what Jesus did for me? I guess at that moment I was supposed to like say yes Jesus I love you but I, didn't, I, was, I was scared to death right? But later I realized that's what he, he paid the penalty of my sin. Yes. He did that for me because he loved me. And I changed my heart. And I wanted to serve him all my life. Amen. We're forgiven. You're forgiven. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And that leads me to my last point, which is going to take some time. Is that all right? We must forgive others. This is so hard. For all of us, we have to forgive others. Uh, Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. 
Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Oh, there's more. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, even 70 times, or come back saying and repeating the same offense, we should forgive them. Luke 17, verse 4. Luke 6, 14, or Matthew 6, 14 has the same story. It says, we we'll probably remember this one more. If somebody offends you, you should forgive them not only seven times, but 70 times, seven times. Which is how many for my mask call? How many times is that? 490 times in a day, or an hour, in a minute, I don't know. For one thing. For one thing. Like, we have to forgive other people when they wrong us, even though we try to love them, and they spit in our face, and they mock us, we're still supposed to forgive them. Or if they wronged us, how many have been wronged by people, or how many has been abused by somebody, or who's been put down by somebody, or been mocked by somebody, and you have that hurt in your heart, and you say, oh, I know what the Word of God says, but God, this is hurts. This is hard. How am I supposed to forgive somebody when they wrong me so many times? How many struggle with that? Just me? Or if something happened like in your past, like when you were a little girl or a little boy, or when you are a teenager and people bullied you, or as you're going through college and st stuff happened, what, how do we, I'm a Christian now. I mean, God, you can forgive them if you want to, but I'm not going to forgive them. You don't know what they did to me. I hear this a lot of times in, in um, counseling. You don't know what they did to me, Pastor. I said, I know. All I can do is tell you this. And I hurt with you because Jesus hurts with you. But all I can tell you is what the Word of God says. And the Word of God tells me that when I, somebody hurts me or wrongs me and I'm forgiven, I have an obligation by the Word of God <laughs> to forgive them. It's almost impossible at times. I would tell you a story on myself again. I guess this is get to know Pastor Bob better day or something. <laughs> I was, uh, I've been wronged by a minister friend of mine. Like really, really bad. Deep hurt. And sometimes I find a lot when I talk to people on the street in Madison and around the campus, uh, even around this area, I'm sure it's around everywhere, but <coughs> even here, a lot of people have been wronged by other Christians or, or ministries, and so they don't want to come to church because that's that's a hurt they have. And I see that a lot. A lot of people disenfranchise about church because of uh, a Christian hurting them. And that's what happened to me. So for years, I would I remember that one of the first uh, times I was preaching here, I was talking about forgiveness. It was uh, in 2005 or probably 2006. And I was preaching about forgiveness, and the Holy Spirit said, what about this person? <coughs> what about this preaching? I'm like, hey, I'm preaching right now. <laughs> I didn't say it out loud, but you know what I'm saying? Did the Holy Spirit talk to you at all different times? And so the Holy Spirit was saying, hey, what about this person? And I was like, like yeah, I'm done with that. I forgive them. I'm, I'm good. And I wasn't. You know, I was like faking it, I guess, you know. <laughs> I was trying to forgive, but I didn't, right? My I was hurt. My family was hurt. We were, I was, it was hard, right? And so I, and this is a couple years later, I was in, meeting with some pastors at McDonald's up in DeForest, and we were having coffee, and we're talking, and one of, the, one of the pastors had an issue, and I said, oh, you have to forgive them, you know, and I explained everything, you know, and one of the wiser <laughs> ones of the group there says to me, as I was explaining that, you know, I'm all good, I forgave him, I'm, I'm, I'm work, you know, life is good, and then he says to me, does he know you forgave him? Goodness. I said, what did you say that for? I mean, up to that point, I was good. I mean, I was happy. I prayed for him and his family. I was good. And then he says to me, does he know that you forgave him? I'm like, no. I'm like, I was mad because he said that. Because truth came to me, and all of a sudden, now I had to do something about it. And I didn't want to. Yeah. I didn't want to make the phone call that I was going to make, because instantly the Holy Spirit said, this is what you're going to do. Not that I had to think about it. It was instantly, you're going to do this. So I got home. I got to the office. 
I looked up his name on the internet, and guess what? He had the same phone number. I was hoping that that phone number changed. I could have an excuse. I don't have to call him, because guess what? I, I tried. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I don't know how he talks to you, but this is how he talks to me. Uh-uh-uh. So I called, I made the phone call. said hello. I must have said, took a minute for me to say hi on the other end. I said, hi, this is Bob. I said, I said, do you I said, can you forgive me? I didn't do anything wrong. For the way I thought. Mm -hmm. says when you know somebody has something against you, then you need to go to that person. Even leave your offering. If you're standing in worship and you're standing walking, just leave your offering at the altar and then go and ask that person to forgive you. What happens then? Well, I tell you what. When I was done, the peace of God flooded my office, not just me, but that whole office. And at that point, <coughs> It was finished. It was finished. It was done. God took the hurt and the pain and the disappointment and he just filled that void that I had with his love and his grace and I received forgiveness. Amazing. If we just understand that God forgave us and did so much for us and that we are to extend that love and that forgiveness to the world. Because the world doesn't offer that. The world doesn't offer forgiveness. There's nothing out there. We work and work and work. We try to do so many things to satisfy and give us peace. We will never have it. I was talking to somebody, I was talking to my dad yesterday, and I took him back to my sisters. We talked about, you know, if we had like a million dollars, it would be so awesome. Oh, we're talking about the new income tax code. But anyway. Um, you know, what if we had double of what our earnings is now? It would be great. We'd have all our bills paid. We'd have, like, that amount left over. We could do, like, whatever we want with it. And, like, and my dad goes, yeah, you just will have so much peace. I'm thinking, uh -huh. no. <laughs> I mean, I didn't correct him because he's my dad. But, you know, um, I'm thinking, no. My peace only comes because of my relationship with Jesus. We're forgiven. God wants to give us peace. In the Lord's Prayer, if you will, in Matthew chapter 6, the last verse says, In prayer, there is a connection between, this is in the Message Bible, in prayer, there is a connection between what God does and what you do. You can't get forgiveness from God, for instance, without also forgiving others. If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's heart. Yeah. Wow. Let me read it again. That's pretty powerful. In prayer, there is a connection between what God does and, and what you do. You cannot, you can't get forgiveness from God, for instance, without also forgiving others. If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's heart. So God is saying like, I'm giving you all this grace. And I'm giving you an opportunity to pray. Like this is the Lord's Prayer. So it talks about how Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray. He was saying, you pray for him to be in thank, thank, uh, giving to the Father and who he is. Honor him. Honor our Father. You know, uh, you do what's right in the world. You, you pray God for the meals and the food that you receive and the, and the things He provides for you. you. You thank Him for overcoming temptation that comes and while you're in the world. Uh, we, we keep us safe from the enemy, right? And then He adds this last part. Like, if He would just leave, stop right there at the Lord's Prayer, I could pray that every day. I mean, that was big, really awesome. Then He adds this last part. God does, Jesus does it all the time. Then, if you do your part, 
because you've been forgiven and so much has put placed on you that I want you to forgive those or forgive others. Mm-hmm. What? Can I just love you, God? Isn't it just that? I mean, I just love you, God, and I'll do whatever you tell me to do. But the forgiveness part, you do, you provided that. What am, what's my part in forgiveness? It is so, so powerful. Mark 11, 25 says, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your sins. The world's hurting. And we have what they need. It's forgiveness. They're confused. They're running after stuff and things. And all they need is to have peace in their life. It's the forgiveness of God. 2 Corinthians 2 10 says this Anyone you forgive will also be forgiven. Isn't that powerful? Because mm-hmm. what happens, and we're, and, uh, Pastor Andy's going to talk about this next week, but we'll get a little, a little bit. But when you stand forgiveness, there's a release that happens in you and in that other person. You're not bond, binding that person from re- going getting close to God, and you're being bound because you can't. I'm telling you, when you hold that hurt in your heart, it's difficult to go to the Father. It's difficult to pray. It's hard when you have something against somebody and you want to just hey, just kind of dismiss it and talk to God. God kind of like I, my spirit always kind of brings that up. Like you go to God in prayer. I don't know how you pray. Sometimes I pray on my knees. Sometimes I stand up. It doesn't really matter how you pray. Pray while you're driving your car. Just keep your eyes open. Pray when you're praying. It seems like the Holy Spirit always brings up what your faults and things you're dealing with in your life, and then that unforgiveness too. Like he just throws it in there. Like you could just not do that, and that'd be good. But the Holy Spirit brings up why? Because when we extend forgiveness, we're we're showing the love of God, the Father, who extended that grace and forgiveness to you and me. It's hard, but it's what God requires of us. So, as you know, most pastors, when we get ready to preach something, we want to study it out, right? We're like, we're going to get some, we're going to talk to people. We're going to get on the internet, YouTube, right? We're going to listen to some sermons about forgiveness. We're going to, you know, we're going to call people. We're going to, hey, I've been preaching on this for years. Hey, what do you, what, what, uh, you know, who can I call that's going to help me with this sermon? So I call Pastor Kim. You know Pastor Kim? Pastor Kim is a Korean pastor that was here for, for about four, about three years, and he uh, finished up his doctorate and on forgiveness. That's what's his doctorate. From UW Madison, he got his doctorate in psychology on forgiveness. I thought, this is an expert. Let me call him. You know what he said? He gave me an email. I printed it out here. But you know what it says here? It says, when you, need, when you want to restore forgiveness, the other person has to know. When you want to restore a relationship because of the brokenness, because of something that happened, the other person has to know. I said, wow, you got your doctorate on that, huh? But it's, it, I mean, you don't have to get, go to the doc, you know, if, you would, if we learn how to forget, we could, we could get rid of half of the medicine at the pharmacy. Really. Because unforgiveness, it hurts us inside, and it comes, it, 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 medically it's proven, it, it affects us medically. One doctor I read said even arthritis, uh, the worst part of arthritis is because of unforgiveness or hatred in your heart. You can look it up on the internet. I love the internet. Not everything's true on the internet, but you can check your sources. If you're going to extend forgiveness or relationship, which I know is difficult, the other person needs to know. All of a sudden, now, instead of having hurt or hatred or whatever towards a person, we restore a relationship, and now we can talk without feeling bad towards one another. So today, and as I close, there's two things I want to ask. One, Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He took your sins away by shedding His blood on the cross for you and me? If you have made that decision,
decision, I want to encourage you today to do so. And second, if you struggle with forgiving somebody, I want to give you an opportunity today to make that right with God and then be led by the Holy Spirit to do whatever you're supposed to do. Maybe there's reconciliation. Maybe there's repayment. Maybe there's something that needs to be done. But whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do, you should do. Amen? Let's, can we sing, He's worthy of it all? Can we do that? And let's stand together. And if today, if you want to make a decision to follow Jesus, I want to give you the opportunity. I think. I